everyone. My name is Holden Hardman. Thank you so much for joining us again for another video. Last time we just finished off the Terminator movies. And before we get into the next big movie series, I guess this kind of would be one. I wanted to show Jen the original Superman movies. This one is just my call, but we are running a poll on Patreon for those of you that want input on the next movie series that we watch. We're going to be watching Superman, Superman 2, and then we're going to watch Superman Returns. So we're just doing those three. We're going to skip three and four for now. Let me know in the comments if that's something that's agreeable. Uh, you know, we can always come back to them if there's enough interest for that. Superman, 1978. What a milestone movie. If it was not for Superman, I still think this to this day, if it was not for Superman, Superman 1 and 2, we would not have the modern superhero movie. This was the first time that they really took a superhero property seriously. Not only do they take it seriously, but they did it well. And uh, if, it, you know, we can look back on the effects and have them and critique them. I still think they did the flying absolutely fantastic in this. Criticize how it looks to modern standard, but it truly is what we have to give thanks for all the superhero stuff we enjoy today. I have a very soft spot in my heart, both for Superman 1 and for Superman 2, and I'm very excited to be showing Jen this for the very first time. Jen, what do you know about Superman? Well, you must know something about Superman. We watched the Zack Snyder stuff already. But what do you know about, I guess, the Christopher Reeve Superman, and how are you feeling going into the movie? I'm actually excited for this one, hearing Holden talk about it so passionately. I'm hoping that it's really good. Christopher Reeve, I know that he, his performance has been um, praised. I'm really excited for that. I, I'm hoping that it brings like a lot of heart. I'm sure it'll be to a certain point kind of difficult to watch. The other Superman movies that we watched were those Totally unrelated. Redone or? No. When we watched Man of Steel, that was still an origin for Superman. So there will be similarities, but it, it's the same way that like the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie had like Uncle Ben dying. And then the Amazing Spider-Man movie had Uncle Ben dying. They're different interpretations of the same story. I'm excited to check this out. It is a older movie. I see that it came out in 1978. To be honest, I have not watched a lot of movies from that time period. So that'll also be kind of a new experience for me, but I'm hoping that this is really going to be good. There is so much like behind the scenes about this movie, Superman 2 especially. There was a lot of drama between the directors. Made two cuts. I'm undecided about which one will do, the Richard Donner cut or the theatrical release, uh, because they are wildly different movies. I guess I wouldn't say that they're crazy different, but they're different enough to where that the, which one you watch will matter. Maybe we'll do both. I don't know. <laughs> there was a Superman show uh, that was on TV. It was black and white prior to this, you know, so I think several decades prior to this, that was pretty well received, I think, at the time. But this, this is the type of movie that I kind of put over there with movies like The Matrix, movies like Lord of the Rings, movies like Star Wars, that are just special. They're there's just something about them that is just special. And I, I absolutely put Superman in that category too. We can critique and compare special effects, which by the way, I still think the special effects of this are, are pretty good overall. This just has a soft space, sp soft spot in my heart. It just does. It takes us back to like a time when Superman was a little bit more Boy Scout-ish. Man of Steel was kind of Superman with a little bit of a darker side to him. Still, you know, still, you would say an edge. still justice, you know, still Superman. But this is like the quintessential optimistic truth, justice in the American way kind of Superman that uh, we don't get anymore. And um, I think it's, I think sometimes it's appropriate to go and look back at characters like Superman, characters like Captain America that kind of had that similar personality. So that's what this Superman is to me. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go ahead and get into it. Superman. Aren't you forgetting something? Oh, oh, yeah, you're totally right. How can we get into Superman without first checking out the comment of the day? Today's comment of the day comes from a poll I did several months ago on YouTube. So this is a, for everybody, but who I thought would win, Darth Vader or Superman. Declan uh, Ardmore says, when Christopher Reeve was training to become Superman, Darth Vader, AKA David Prowse, was his trainer. So Darth Vader trained Christopher Reeve. Oh. That's very, very cool. And the movie came out, I think the same year or a year apart, 19, well, 1978, Super Star Wars came out in 17, 78 or 79, it was around there. And then the next one, for when we watched, my wife watches Zack Snyder's Justice League. So we watched the four hour cut. Jared Shepard says, fun fact, the cop that Cyborg saved from the tank is actor Mark McClure, who played the original Jimmy Olsen in all four of the Christopher Reeve Superman films. So I actually didn't know that until I, I read uh, that comment. There were a couple other comments that said the same thing later. But uh, very cool. Thank you guys so much for those comments of the day. We appreciate it. If you want your comment featured in a comment of the day, leave us a comment down below. We'll check those out. But for now, let's get into it. Superman. Today's video brought to you by Factor. Spring is finally here, and what better way to energize you for the warmer days ahead than getting America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. Factor meals are cheaper than takeout, 
are ready in just two minutes and delivered to your door. Factor is a brand that we do personally use. And with our baby only two months away as of filming this, whoa, it allows us to avoid going to the grocery store as often. It's convenient. It's safe for my wife right now, and it's packed with nutrition. After the baby is born, we're pretty much going to be using them exclusively, at least for a period of time. That way, instead of doing all the cooking and cleaning, we can just focus exclusively on the baby while making sure we both get the nutrition that we need, but especially Jen. They're delicious, they arrive fresh, never frozen, and they offer a varied menu for your various lifestyles. Keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and protein plus. The meal are made by professional chefs and their dietitian approved. We have used the different meal services in the past and I am telling you, Factor is the best, both in quality and in price. Each week you can pick a different assortment of meals if you're wanting to change it up. You can skip a week if there's a week where you just don't need any meals. You can increase it depending on your needs or even decrease the amount that you need. Jen and I have done all of that in the past and it's really easy and convenient and there's no runaround nonsense. Factor has many options to make it easy to stick to your goals, like smoothies. I'm quick to grab a Factor smoothie as I'm running out the door trying to get the kids off to school on time. Head to Factor 75 com or click the link below and use code HOLDEN50 to get 50% off your first box. That's factor75.com or the link in the description and use code HOLDEN50 and we're going to get you 50% off your first box. Supporting the sponsor helps support the channel, so make sure you go check them out. Is that Gene Hackman? Oh, heck yeah. Of course it is. This movie has like 20 minutes of credits, by the way. <laughs> Even the great city of Metropolis does not bear the ravages of the worldwide depression. Marlon Brando. Oh, you're watching Star Wars. Same composer, John Williams. Oh, cut it. So it's very similar, actually, in, in their style. This is, a, this is good. This one makes me emotional for some reason. I don't know what it is. Everything that I have heard, Christopher Reeve was such a good-hearted person. Yeah. He's in a great romance movie called uh, Somewhere in Time. Watch it like around Valentine's Day. That that was like the style. It was like that black and white kid. And then it, it goes in with this, you know, 3D graphic of being like, welcome to the modern world. This is real Superman, you know? Okay. We got about, I love you. We got about 20 minutes of this. And then we'll get stuff. <laughs> then we'll get the movie going. I love, I love you. you. Superman has a dog <gasps> as well in crypto. Not in this, but he has a dog, but it's not in the movie. Right, right, right. Just in the comics, he has a dog called Crypto. Well, that's a missed opportunity. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I like the colors. You're colorblind. She's not colorblind. All dogs are colorblind. That's not, how do you know? Unless you've been a dog, how do you know? Sure, oh, well, we know that humans see color because of certain cones and connectivity in the eye that dogs have missing. They could be wrong. <laughs> About 15 more minutes, then it'll get going. Well, this is like movie in itself. These indictments. This is Marlon Brando, one of the greatest actors of all time. Today. He's the freaking godfather. Acts of treason. Their ultimate aim of sedition, matters of undeniable fact. This mindless aberration, whose only means of expression are wanton violence and destruction, has threatened even the children of the planet Krypton. Krypton. Finally, General Zod, chief architect of this intended revolution and author of this insidious plot. Guilty. 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 The vote must be unanimous, Dora. You alone will condemn us if you wish, and you alone will be held responsible by me. Oh, jeez. I offer you a chance for greatness, jor -El. You will bow down before me, both you, and then one day, your ass! The hoop. Oh, hula hoop? Yeah. It looks like it's composited in after the fact. I wonder if maybe they were like, there was a machine or something behind them that was, they were occluding. You will bow down before me. A UFO. Well, you'll see. What? It, it, it's called the Phantom Zone. It imprisoned them. Oh, that's cool. So now it's other. They're just gonna fly through space. Uh, yeah, just, forever. Just trapped in this thing forever. 
The council has already evaluated this idea. Oh, I like the tinfoil outfits. <laughs> And I tell you that we must evacuate this planet immediately. This planet will explode within 30 days, if not sooner. This discussion is terminated. The decision of the Council is final. Any attempt by you to create a climate of fear and panic must be deemed by us an act of insurrection. Has it now become a crime to cherish life? He remains here with us. He will die as surely as we will. Their atmosphere will, will sustain him. He won't be one of them. No, he will not be alone. He will never be alone. We will never leave you even in the face of our death. All that I have, all that I've learned, everything I feel, all this and more, I, I bequeath you, my son. Oh. You will make my strength your own. See my life through your eyes. The son becomes the father, and the father, the, the son. Oh, so good. It's so depressing. I love that. They paid Marlon Brando $10 million for this movie. The high, my highest paid. He actually put some of his lines on the uh, inside of that bassinet thing. So they don't believe him? Right. They, he had some data and they said that they accept his data, they reject his conclusion. Council said, no, we don't want to panic. Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, we just think, we think the planet's shifting its orbit. Oh shoot, Jorel was right. Maybe he should have not gone with an all glass theme. <laughs> oh. Actors go. Talk about cracking under pressure. Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh god. Talk about shattering your expectations. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I've heard of a leap of faith, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, that just seals the deal. Little baby on his way. Mm. He says later that uh, I'll be dead for many thousands of your Earth years. But here he is referencing Einstein before he even left. What's he eating? He's being, I don't know. He's being sustained by the ship. I don't know. Best not to ask questions about this part. <laughs> <laughs> what about all that waste? <laughs> He's like pooping and peeing and the thing. <laughs> yeah. <It> just, it's <laughs> one full ev diaper. Evacuates it. You could argue that there's like maybe time dilation. But it still doesn't explain why Jor-El would be talking about Einstein. There we are, just minding our business. <laughs> now, wouldn't that beat all get out? Wouldn't that beat all get out? Oh! oh blur it. All right. Uh -huh. Definitely a different time. Good Lord, see fit to give us a child. Uh -huh. Why is she just assuming that this is... Oh, he he's like, come on now. We, we can't just take the kid. <laughs> thing we got to do when we get home is find out yeah he's like uh, you know that I, boy's proper family is. he hasn't got any <laughs> <laughs> this is like us with I, a dog i know how could you possibly know that martha clark kent are you listening to what i'm saying <laughs> oh <laughs> that's such a great shot there <laughs> golly what in the name of all get out lana don't bother with these huh thank you clark sure Come on, he's got to clean Brad, relax, dude. Clean up, Mary this. Ellen? Oh, man. Where are they in? Des Moines, Iowa? <laughs> man, you just know Mary Ellen puts out. <laughs> puts on the Beach Boys and... Hey, I like the Beach Boys. Yeah, me too. They're great. Kansas. Yeah. Lance Holland. I've wondered how they did this, because he has a shadow on the road there. Yeah. Wait, his backpack said Smallville High. The Smallville, the show was like... Yeah, Smallville, the show was like Superman before he was Superman. 
Okay. Hey, look, there's Clark. Oh, Clark. How'd you get here so fast? I ran. Could you imagine having, like, to, like, discipline Superman as a child? Like, what would... Um, is it showing off doing the things he's capable of doing? Is, is no. a bird showing off when it flies? No. You are here for a reason. I do know one thing. It's not to score touchdowns. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's a cute little farm. Yeah, I love it. It's just like the... It's just I mean, humble, you know. Oh. Jonathan! Dad. Oh. Oh, gosh. Uh, so depressing. Yeah. All those powers. And I couldn't even save him. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be rough to think about. A long way to walk. Yeah, you made you made Martha walk that far. I knew this time would come. Oh, poor Martha. Imagine just like living your life in restraint. Like if he squeezes too hard, he just kills her. You know. Mm -hmm. Oh, he really meant north. Yeah, you know you're going north when you pass Canada. Mm -hmm. No gloves or anything. Guess he wouldn't need it. He's Superman. Why is he choosing to go north? Crystal was kind of guiding him. So it was like glowing there. This is where I want you to be. That isn't like a styrofoam piece of ice. Remember who you are. Oh, wrong, wrong thing. You do not remember me. I am Jorel. I will have been dead for many thousands of your years. Yeah, see? Yeah. The question is to be asked. And it is time for you to do so. Here in this, this fortress of solitude. Oh, there you go. Who am I? Your name is Kalel. You are the only survivor of the planet, Krypton. They can be a great people, Kalel. They wish to be. They only lack the light to show the way. For this reason, above all, their capacity for good. I have sent them you, my only son. All right. Nice. That looks freaking good, you know. I mean, it... it really does. They got the shadow and everything. Yeah. I mean, he, he really moved through that. That was real. There was like series of different rigs and like things that they did to to make that happen. Smile. <laughs> That's uh, Jimmy Olsen. Well, there oh, he if, is. His little suit. It's got everything. It's got sex. It's got violence. It's got the ethnic angle. I mean, look yeah. At so that. is a lady wrestler with a foreign accent. Christopher <laughs> Reeve. Christopher Reeve cleans up very well. Exactly. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Olson, why am I paying you forty dollars a week when I should have you arrested for loitering? Clark Kent may seem like just a mild-mannered reporter, but listen, the fastest typist I've ever seen. <laughs> Perhaps you could arrange for half my salary to be, to be sent to this address on a weekly basis. Thank oh, you very much. He gets half his salary to his mom back home in Kansas. Aww. Any more at home like you? Uh, not really. <laughs> How'd you like your first day on the job? Huh? Let's just say Krypton's not the only thing exploding. <laughs> what explodes? What was that? Their interest for each other, sweetie. <laughs> for each other? <laughs> God. Hey, huh? Come here. Jimmy Olsen was fantastic. Come on, come on. Get in here. Hurry up. What? Yeah, it's a little cheesy here. Get in here, quick. Come on, come on. Right. Little finger. You could hurt somebody with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hurt somebody with that. I mean, no, I realize, of course, that it's time to talk. <laughs> this isn't the answer. Now, come on, lady, hand it over. Oh, Lois, just think maybe you better. Lois? Oh. Oh. He caught the bullet. What happened? Freaking hair of his. You fainted. Sorry. Nice. 
Is it worth risking your life over ten dollars, two credit cards, a hairbrush, and a lipstick? Describe the exact contents of my purse. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe you lead us to the big man himself. Lex Luthor? Scary 101. Oh, the poppers. Hey, what are you reading? Hey, Harry, I'll call for back. Be careful now, will you? All right, Armis, all right. Armis, Armis, make it track 22. Amazing that brain can generate enough power to keep those legs moving. <laughs> Uh oh. He's dead? Uh, he just got pushed in front of a train. Harry, oh no. Oh. Gene Hackman. How do you choose to congratulate the greatest criminal mind of our time? Huh? huh? Try twist it. It's <laughs> the most brilliantly diabolical leader surrounding himself with total nincompoops. I back, Boy. Mr. Luthor. Yes, I was uh, just talking about you. <laughs> oh, spot the pinky ring. Yep. Oh, he has two. Yep. So extra evil. What is this obsession with real estate? All the time, land, land, land. People are no damn good, but they will always need land, and they'll pay through the nose to get it. Get this Loch Ness update right into composing. Right. Loch Ness. Oh, we love Loch Ness. No Z in Brazil. Hey, nice job. <laughs> Hey, you can't Google check it either, you know, back in the day. Yeah. Well, so I was wondering if maybe you'd like to have a little dinner with me. Oh, gosh, Clark, I'm sorry I'm booked. Oh. Can I uh, take you to the airport? <laughs> Not unless you can fly. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, because you can't. Oh, no. Clark seems like a good guy. Yeah. He's really tall, too, in real life. I think uh, Christopher Reeve's like 6'2 or 6'3 or something like that. <laughs> oh, man. Poor Clark. Uh oh. That looks dangerous. There's a final destination. <laughs> we'll go back down, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh, he lost stabilized rotor control. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh. Oh. oh. That'd be scary. Scary. Oh. Meanwhile, Clark. Go time. Mm. This is a <laughs> this is a callback. He'd always change in a phone booth. Mm. So even even back then, there was a reference. Mm. Oh, that music, John Williams. Oh, nice. Oh, right. he even did his hair. Oh, yep. Excuse me. All right, Lois. Oh my gosh. Easy, miss. I've got you. Who's got you? <laughs> Every time I see this scene, I think of that uh, Big Bang Theory episode where Sheldon's like, if you were to catch her, Lois Lane's falling at 120 meters per second per second. <laughs> he holds out two arms of steel, just cuts her into three equal pieces. Oh my goodness. It doesn't look horrible. No, it doesn't. It looks pretty good. Like, that looks pretty solid, you know? Mm -hmm. Especially all being practical. Well, I certainly hope this little incident hasn't put you off flying, miss. It's still the safest way to travel. <laughs> Who are you? Wait, she doesn't recognize him? That's, that's about running thing. That that's looks, a leap. That looks great. I think it goes to show how like mild-mannered Clark, I mean, she never really looked at Clark in the face because he's such a nobody, you know? Maybe. Like nobody pays attention to the, to the Clark Kents of the world, but everyone oh, looks up to sad. the Superman. They did a thing with Henry Cavill who played Superman and Zack Snyder's, mm -hmm. uh, where he was like walking around the streets of New York wearing, just wearing sunglasses and like nobody recognized him. Hmm. So they were talking about like how practical would that be? <laughs> Hi there, nothing wrong with the elevator? <laughs> <laughs> what if he just left him? Yeah. <laughs> I need to do an edit where he just like watches him fall. <laughs> it doesn't save him. <laughs> well, they say confession's good for the soul. I'd listen to this man. <laughs> He's so freaking corny, I love it. They say confession's good for the soul. Yeah. Come on, let's get out of here. I just stumbles on this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> like a big blue bird. Get the 
With bright red boots. Flying. Nice. I'd be a little overkill, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get my hat. Let me get my hat. <laughs> you come down from oh, this is my favorite part in the whole movie. My favorite, my favorite scene. Come on. Here you go, miss. <laughs> Gee, thanks, mister. Bye. That looks great, by the way. I mean, Bye. that looks really freaking good. Wait, did she? She's like slapped her, yeah. Haven't I told you to stop telling lies? She just pops her. Oh my gosh. She just don't see it coming because it's so like innocent. Yeah. It's like, all right, little girl, here's Frisky. Air Force One. It's a crazy setup of his. Yeah, he's got a nice pad. Crime of the century, a man I like the pool. Yeah, it's nice. Flies. The news. Look, Ma, no wires. I want the name of this flying whatchamacallit to go with the Daily Planet like bacon and eggs. I don't think that he would uh, lend himself to any ch cheap promotion schemes. Though. Exactly how would you know that, Ken? Um, really? None of them just... All right. Single most important interview since God talked to Moses. Clock. <laughs> it's 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Oh. Hmm. Sorry to uh, drop in on you like this. You know, there must be a lot of questions about me that people in the world would like to know the answer. Of course. Uh, you really shouldn't smoke, you know, Miss Lane. Lung cancer, right? Well, not yet, thank goodness. Girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't, but uh, if I did, Miss Lane, you'd be the first to know about it. Oh. Um, it's pretty slick with that cape on. Over 21. And how big are you? How tall? Oh, geez. Uh, about 6'4". Uh, well, um, uh, I assume then that the bodily functions are normal. We could test them out if you'd like. Do you eat? Eat what? Uh, yes. I could eat a peach for hours. <gasps> I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Do. <laughs> Caster well, Troy. See through anything. Uh, yes, I can. <laughs> this is a lot more sexual than I would have imagined. Pink. Oh. Pink. Pink. I think she's gonna have to worry about um, breast cancer instead of lung cancer if she was hanging out with him. You like pink? I love pink. <laughs> I like pink very much, Lois. I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. <laughs> I never lie. Well, he's just a perfect man, isn't he? Have you arrived at me? <laughs> you mean I can fly? <laughs> oh, we can do that after. Oh yeah, that's good. Oh, wait, wait a minute, where are you going? That was pretty good. That was good. a good one. I need a sweater. It must be kind of cold. Now you'll be warm enough. <laughs> 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 ah, you'll be warm enough. Oh, Clark. No, he's nothing. He's just a... Peter he's... Pan, huh? Uh -huh. Peter Pan flew with children, though. Let me take you on a grown-up adventure. Hilton Thomas Hardman. What's that? How is she flying though? She's, she's not, she's just hanging on to him. I think it's like the uh, the amount of like speed that she's going, her legs like naturally raise up as she's moving. This is not New York. But they have the statue of, all right. I mean, they're pretty much New York. Metropolis is like the stand up for New York. Marvel like has like the real cities, you know, but DC has Metropolis, Gotham, or like fiction. Mm. Gotham's like Chicago, Metropolis, like New York. Uh... <laughs> oh my gosh. It'll be fine. Do you know what it is that you do to me? <laughs> Looks like getting ready to do something up in the air there. <laughs> you look at me quivering. Uh, you'll be warm enough. Like a little girl. Can you read my mind? Can you picture the things I'm thinking of? <laughs> you know, she kind of looks like Courtney Cox, like old school. Well, that was a cute little date. Yeah, that whole uh, Can You Read My Mind poem thing was like iconic. After when this. are you going to take me on a flying date? Yeah, I can't fly. Well, learn. Because you would look good in that. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm too pudgy. Like, off. Oh, I can read your mind. <laughs> 
Come on, babe, let me show you my Kryptonian parts. It's the boots for me. I do like his boots. Uh, unironically, I like his boots. <laughs> Superman. So she gave him his name? Yeah. <laughs> it's a little overkill. Uh, hi, you want to come in? Say, did you even hear me knocking? Uh -huh. Did you hear me knocking? Well, let's uh, push off, shall we? <laughs> Oh, look, okay. it's just all, it's all demeanor changes. Yeah. Oh. Lois. His voice. I have to tell you. Uh, I mean, I, I was uh, at first really nervous about tonight. Mm. Show you the time of your life. That's Clark nice. That's Clark nice. And M. You want M, Mr. Luthor? Come on right up. Oh. An elegant ladder. This ladder, Mr. Luthor, coming right up. I just, I didn't see. Do you know why the number 200 is so vitally descriptive. Your weight and my IQ. Now think, people. Think. <laughs> A meteorite found in Addis Ababa. This stuff here will we'll kill, kill him. him. Oh. Boy, the mother bird. Go ahead. Everything looks good. <laughs> well, I suggest a uh, vigorous chest massage. If that doesn't work, uh, Yes, sir. Gosh. Somebody hurt? Oh, gee. Oh, gee. Gee, Mr. Luther. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. Would you like to see a very, very long arm? Oh, no, Mr. Luther. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Their get ups is just ridiculous. I mean, you don't even know his name. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ugh. Charge. Let people know who you are. Well, I was oh. Oh, to puppies. Only one thing alive with less than four legs can hear this frequency, Superman. In approximately five minutes, a poison gas pellet. We released two thousands of air ducts in the city. Half the population. Oh wow. I know it all seems a bit much, but how else was I going to meet you? You'd never accept an invitation to tea. <laughs> <laughs> There's a strong streak of good in you, Superman. But then nobody's perfect. <laughs> He's definitely coming, Mr. Luthor. It's open. Come in. <laughs> All right, Luthor, where's the gas pellet? This is the back of my mind, actually. This is a little idea I was toying with. Everything west of this line is the richest, most expensive real estate in the world. It occurs to me that a 500 megaton bomb would, uh, would destroy most of California. Millions of innocent people would be killed. Bye bye, California. <laughs> Hello, new west coast, my west coast. Otisburg? It's a little bitty place. It's a little bitty place. Otisburg? I'm <laughs> <laughs> Just looking at him. Well, what do you think, Super Baby? Super Baby? Mitch Tetrucker! <laughs> oh, even Superman, like, he's taken aback for a second by that. It's going like a bat over the Grand Canyon. Stop the other one. The other one? <laughs> yeah, Superman, double jeopardy. Even you, with your great speed, couldn't stop both of them. All right, Luther. Where is it? Where's a detonator? You really think you could hide it from me by encasing it in lead? Oh. Little souvenir for the old hometown. I spared no expense to make you feel right at home. You were great in your day, Superman. Mind over muscle. Uh oh. Oh. Oh my gosh. We all have our little faults. Our little faults. California. Super villain always leaves before they're dead. Next. <laughs> you can't just stand there. If I help you, do you promise to save my mother first? Oh, I promise. I promise. I don't understand. Is it like he cannot remove it or is it the weight? There's really no good explanation. He, he should be able to get out of that. But it makes him just makes him really weak. And if he, if he keeps it around too long, it'll kill him. Oh. She's doing that without his consent. Why did you kiss me first? I didn't think you'd let me later. That was the other way around. 
close. No movement on that hair of his. <laughs> that stuff is gelled down. Yeah, except for that front little curl. Yeah. Oh, wow. Liquid hot magma. <laughs> I've heard of explosive prices, but this is ridiculous. Wow. I mean, so that doesn't look that bad. No, it, but it's just playing it in reverse. So it looks kind of off. <laughs> Back on the hey, it's Superman. <laughs> That's creative. <laughs> yeah. That's where they're holding Megatron. Jimmy. Hang on, Jim. Be safe here, son. <laughs> Jeez, come on, turn up. Come on! Lois, get out. Oh, claustrophobia. Lois. Some uh, good old miniature houses there. Ah! Hope you weren't too attached to Lois. No, he saves her. Come on, Lois. Maybe, maybe some chest compressions or something. Yeah. Well, close enough. <laughs> oh, yeah. My son. It is forbidden. All those powers. And I couldn't even save him. I said, screw it. Is he going back in time? Right, yep. I mean, he's easily faster than light there. All right, he was talking about Einstein's theory of relativity mm -hmm. on the way to Earth. think it's dead you know what happened to me while you were off flying around <laughs> I was in an earthquake i had to sorry about that lois but i've been kind of busy for a while i'm sorry it's all right hey thanks a lot superman oh, oh what a cock block for real it's better mr kent wasn't here to see all this yeah never around when clark wait a minute wait. he really cares about you clark of course he does oh no, not clark superman cares about everybody jimmy <laughs> I think these two men should be safe here with you now so they can get a fair trial. Who is it, Superman? So they can get a fair trial. Lex Luthor, the greatest criminal mind of our time. Of our Cannot take him seriously. This country is safe again, Superman, thanks to you. Don't thank me, Warden. We're all part of the same team. I don't know, Superman. You did a lot of the heavy lifting there. 
All right, just finished watching Superman. There's so many fun facts about this movie. The sequel has even more fun facts behind it because there was a lot of drama in the production of it with Richard Donner, the director of Superman. And uh, they kind of like replaced him in the second part two, but he still filmed pretty much his version of the movie, which is why at the beginning of this video, I talked about Superman 2, the Richard Donner cut or the theatrical cut. They really are like drastically different in like the composition of the film. They basically filmed the movie twice in different ways. It's one of those that people really do have a kind of a split opinion on which one is better. Marlon Brando, they brought in. I talked about this too. It's a similar thing that George Lucas did uh, bringing in um, Alec Guinness as like these like professional actors because Marlon Brando wasn't like a science fiction actor at all. He was like the godfather. He was in a movie called On the Waterfront, you know? So he's like up there, top tier. And then he wants to do this comic book movie. So they paid through the nose to get him in, that, in this movie to bolster the seriousness of the film. George Lucas did the same thing with Alec Guinness as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Good moves on their part, they paid for it. Anyway, all that to ask, what did you think of Superman? I actually overall really liked it. The biggest thing that stood out is just, I'm such a fan of like the darker stuff. But this movie was like a lighthearted superhero movie. Um, obviously it had its moments where it was a little bit emotional for different reasons, especially in the beginning. But overall it was very like peppy. <laughs> like I don't know exactly how to explain it, but it was very lighthearted, able to smile through most of it. I did like that. It was a nice change of pace. Christopher Reeve, I really love as Superman. Across the board, some of the acting was like cheesy and kind of outdated, but I mean, that makes sense with this being as old as it is. And so I really don't hold it against the movie at all. Loved Gene Hackman. He was so over the top. There was like a charm to him. So I really did enjoy him a lot. I loved the love story with him and Lois Lane. It was very strange the way that they left this movie off. I wasn't, I, I'm not used to that. And again, I think it's just because it's an older movie. Maybe that was a type of ending that was more accepted back then or more commonplace than it is now, but they really left it on like, a couple things were not wrapped up or explained or delved into. I'm very curious about checking out the, the next Superman movie because I want to see kind of how it concludes. Lois having like her suspicions about him and just them having that moment where they really clear the air about his true identity. Visually, I thought that it looked really good for being made in the, the 70s. I was surprised. Flying scenes in particular looked really good. The earthquake I thought was uh, very well done. I really liked the first, I would say 20, 30 minutes. That was probably my favorite part of the movie overall. Him, his father and his mother and them actually sending him off and what happened to his planet. I loved kind of having that background. And I know that we saw this touched on in the other Superman movies that we watched, but honestly, I didn't remember most of it. So it was nice to have kind of a refresher, but the original. So. I, I thought overall it was a good movie. Like it was, it was a lot funnier than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was like a, a good time. And like at the heart of it, it's just a good old love story. And I love how Superman was depicted in this one. Really not a lot of like darkness related to his character. Obviously he had the pop passing away. I know that was hard, but beyond that, like he was a very happy guy, very like smiley, very uh, respectful, not the type of tone that I've been used to. That was a nice little refresher. I actually, um, liked it. I liked that he was very happy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, I thought that was great. They, they didn't focus so much on the character's struggles as they did just the character's capabilities. It, it was a feel good superhero movie. And so I, I really appreciate that for what it is. And um, I actually really liked it. Yeah. I, I... No, I mentioned earlier on that uh, he is very much like Boy Scout, uh, Captain America-esque kind of character. This is maybe not to the extent that it is in the 70s, but ultimately that is the kind of Superman that I really like. Uh, when we watch Superman Returns, Brandon Routh plays uh, this Superman. 
And uh, I think that he just nailed it. I think that, well, we'll get into all that. Um, I love Henry Cavill. I, I think that he's a fantastic Superman, fits the mold. I think that he's great. But one of the, one of the pitfalls, I think, was before Man of Steel came out, they had done the Dark Knight, they had done Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises, which were certainly darker films than this. And so general audience liked this like darker sense of Batman. Superman Returns comes out around 2006. He's kind of a good old boy. And it, it's kind of not, not universally loved. A lot of people thought that he captured the essence of Christopher Reeve, but WB felt that audience were, audiences were wanting a darker feeling superhero. So come 2013, uh, Christian Bale's done being Batman. So they bring in Zack Snyder and they make Superman a little darker in Man of Steel. And so then you have a kind of a darker Superman and a darker Batman, and then it just got, and then it just made the whole thing dark. I like the contrast of a dark Batman and a light Superman working together. I think that's why the one of the reasons why the mixture works so well. You have the Dark Knight and like the Light of Hope. Uh, so when they're both kind of dark and drab, it just kind of pulls everything down. So I think I do think that that was a mistake. They should have made Man of Steel. Uh, a little bit lighter in that regard. This is this is just my opinion. I know a lot of people have their opinions on it. Uh, this is just my opinion on that. So you know, just take it easy. It's not fact. It's just what I think. Christopher Reeve, fantastic. Loved him. I had some issues really with like how they handled time travel, but time travel is always such a murky thing. Like if Superman were to go back in time, he didn't really save Lois. The for some reason the earthquake thing didn't happen and Jimmy Olsen runs over there and there would technically be two Supermen. One of them is doing the stuff he was doing and the other one would be there saving Lois. So, but he just sort of goes back in time and shows up and nothing really happens. But that's neither here nor there. I love Gene Hackman. I thought that he's great. I love his Lex Luthor. Marlon Brando killed it. That moment when he sends little kal off to Earth and he gives that whole speech, it just, it, it makes me emotional. He just, he, he crushes it. He's like, that whole, that whole, uh, poetic speech that he gives. There's a lot of poetry in this movie, both in that scene and then the, of course the scene with Lois, the can you read my mind thing. Visual effects I thought looked great. Uh, I've I looked into some of like the behind the scenes stuff. It's been a while, but they created all kinds of rigs, all kinds of techniques in order to make it look like he was flying. The whole, the whole uh, movie hung on, can we convince the audience that he is flying? Because they've done all these different flying techniques in films and movies and plays in the past. So they created new technology to have those shots of a moving camera and him taking off and not seeing any of the wires. So, and then of course there's still the classic him in front of kind of a green screen and kind of a tight close up, you know, whatever, but just fantastic across the board. And then this is really a part one of a part two where you have to follow up with the three Kryptonian criminals at the end who, who makes this on, ominous claim that, you know, if you send me, the choice is up to you, jor -El. If you send us out here, I'm holding you personally responsible. You will bow down before me, you and your heirs. And he gets sucked into the Phantom Zone away. So they, th that was literally just introduced in this and not brought up again. It was intentional. And then the stuff with Lois, you know, and him. What's gonna happen with him? We'll find out in the next one. Uh, what would you rate this? I don't mind the darker Superman. I like Henry Cavill, Cavill? Yep. The Cavill. I thought he was great in his own way, but there is something to be said about just a classic superhero that makes you feel better when you leave the theater or however you're viewing it. And I think this is just a good example. It's, it's obviously more of the positive side. I am not used to seeing that so raw, <laughs> like it's, Really, it feels like you're on Prozac the entire movie. But I like that. I like that every now and then. And I think that Christopher Reeve did a great job playing him. He honestly did. I think overall, for me, this is a very like classic superhero film. Really not overly complicated. Even emotion-wise, they're keeping it very limited. It's like, we have a bad guy, we have a love story, and we have our superhero. Like, very simple components. I like the simplicity of that versus some of the newer Superman movies were very complicated emotion-wise. A lot of trials and tribulations going on. This one, they just kept it simple. And I think there's something to be said about that. I'm gonna rate this one a nine pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm uh, glad to hear you say that. There's a common problem with having a character like Superman, and that problem is how do you write a good villain for somebody that is indestructible, that can't be hurt, that can move faster than the speed of light? That's always been his problem. He's, he's at such a god-tier level 
of power. It's hard to give him problems that, you know, like for instance, when Batman or Spider-Man or any of these guys run into a burning building, there's a chance that they could get hurt. There's a chance that they, you know, could breathe in too much smoke and die or whatever, you know, get hit and, you know, that could be the end of them. Superman does not have that problem. He goes in, he's coming out, you know? So I think that the way that they handled it with a, a human character like Lex Luthor, just brilliant and giving him the problem of there's, I can't fight you, obviously. I can crush your spirit, essentially. I can send these two rockets out and you can only save one. So you're, I'm gonna win one way or another. So I, I like that, that, that resolution to the Superman problem. The whole buying the fault line, or uh, destroying the fault line and buying that real estate. You would have problem, he said it was like a 500 megaton bomb, which would like be ex what, excessively radioactive for like hundreds of years after the fact, but I guess that, uh, I don't know, <laughs> but anyway, I thought always thought that that was funny. But overall, I, I really like this movie. Like Jen said, it's just, it's, it's very pure and we don't get really like pure superhero movies anymore. Marvel doesn't really make them in, in this sense of like purity with the exception of maybe the first uh, Captain America film. And DC certainly isn't making them like this anymore, but I feel like the world is so jaded at this point. Um, and we're so used to like darkness, especially in the WB uh, DC stuff and the silliness that is the MCU right now. I wouldn't mind bringing back, maybe not to this extent, you know, where truth, justice, and the American way, everything is perfect all the time, we, maybe not to that level, but certainly I think maybe the world could use just a dash of the Christopher Reeve style of Superman. That's all I'm saying. It's all, I know, I know, everybody loves to, and, I, and honestly, Henry Cavill could be that guy. I, I feel so bad for him, mm -hmm. I love him. I, he is a fantastic Superman. Don't miss, don't mishear me. I can see people commenting, oh, he's great Superman, you just are so stupid. I love him, he's fantastic. He could do this, and I feel bad that he's not gonna get that chance. Anyway, those are just my feelings. I love this movie, I love Superman 2 even more, so I cannot wait to watch that one. For me, this movie is a solid nine, I would say too. It's not perfect, I, I have some problems with it, uh, certainly the ending, st time travel stuff always gets kind of wonky, but overall, I, this, is, this is just a movie that is special. Anyway guys, these are just some of our thoughts. We'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments below, so let us know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like. It does help the channel out a lot. Subscribe, you'll be notified when we post Superman 2. I don't know yet if we'll do the Richard Donner cut or the theatrical, we'll see. Check out Patreon. You can get early access to select videos just like this one without ads until I publish them, and you can watch the full length reaction to Superman and pretty much all the movies that we do over there as well. But for now, that is it. Jen and I appreciate you watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Take care.